What was deployment like? Well, I've only deployed twice. Uh, and I say that because in the special operations community, like there are folks that deploy like an ungodly number of times yeah. to places that are just the worst places in the world. So just it's important that people understand that my experience with deployments is as minimal as it gets within the SEAL community. I, I did the minimum tour of duty. Sure. Um, but I had, I, you know, I'm not going to get too into detail about what I did, but you know, the, the two places I went was Afghanistan for the first deployment in 2013, 2014. Uh, and then I went to South America in my second deployment in 15, 16. The one thing I will say about Afghanistan is... Uh, well, there's context. So when you become a Navy SEAL or really when you become any sort of uh, person in the military that is a, a designated combat role or you have designated combat capabilities, because not everybody does. There are plenty of roles in the military that are administrative or they're legal mm -hmm. or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if you've been trained to like go to war, it isn't that you pray for war. It's that you 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 hope for an opportunity to actually put your skills to the test. That's, that sounds barbaric, but yeah. it's a very natural thing. Think about it. Mm -hmm. You've been trained extensively to do this. You want an opportunity to do it. When we were given the opportunity, because it, it's, a, it's a weird thing with how deployments happen. It's not, you don't necessarily know where you're going to go. And then it kind of, it ends up being like which platoon of SEALs is doing the best. They get the better deployment, which again would be war. And so our platoon was I think that I think that we actually were the second best platoon. So we were not up for getting to go to Afghanistan, but there was some issue with their chief on the other side. So we got the opportunity to go. I was so excited about going to Afghanistan for the reasons I said to you, not out of bloodlust, but yeah. out of like, I'm a professional <laughs> Navy SEAL. I want to go do my job. But man, it was terrifying, you know, coming into it because we knew, and I, I can't get into too much what we did, not because I'm so cool, but just for sensitivity purposes, we knew where we were going was a, what they would call a connection site like there was the opportunity for actual combat because there are people that deploy to the Middle East where they don't necessarily get into any sort of combat um, but where we were going it was kind of like a known thing that you will see combat that will happen and I remember we were in this uh, we were do doing, doing some training in Nevada leading up to our deployment and we had just found out that we were going to get to go to Afghanistan and this is like maybe a couple of months out from deployment and one of our more senior guys, his name, I'm not gonna say his name, yeah. one of the more senior guys who had done several deployments all to Afghanistan and Iraq, he was like, you could see that he was kind of crestfallen. Like you, I remember looking over at him and he's like a big intimidating guy. He was like a leader in the platoon. And it just looked like he was really disappointed to hear we were going to Afghanistan. Uh, and so I, I walked up to him afterwards and I was like, why aren't you excited about this? I'm a brand new guy. Then, you know, yeah. I'm like wired to go do these things. Uh, and he's like, because someone's gonna die. That's what happens. You go to these places, someone here right now is gonna get killed, at least one. Like every time, that's what happens. And he was in no way like a coward. He was just, he's done this before. And I think that was the first time that it dawned on me that like to that point, my whole like journey to be a SEAL was very charmed. I mean, like it's pretty incredible to say, I'm gonna be a Navy SEAL and then go through all the training and become a Navy SEAL. There are a few <laughs> moments as fucking unreal as having a Navy SEAL stamp your trident into your chest because you've earned the right to be called a Navy SEAL. It's like, it's unbelievable. But it was like, now I'm seeing the reality of the job. Like I haven't gone and seen it yet, but I'm, I'm seeing someone that's done this before and they're like, I'm not excited about this. I'd rather go somewhere else. I'll do my job, but that's the reality. Um, I will say, fortunately, our platoon did not lose anyone on our deployment. There were several people hurt, actually, including me. That set the tone for me going into the deployment. I, th I started to look at it more, not uh, scared, but Realistic. More realistic, yeah. Right. And um, I remember before I actually deployed, my family was definitely on, on the fence, you know, like worried about it, you know. And I found myself going out of my way to reassure them that it was going to be fine. Like, dude, I'm, I'm a trained Navy SEAL. I'm surrounded by Navy SEALs. I'll be fine. What it did is it didn't really allow me to be honest before I deployed about how I was feeling because I was constantly putting on this act of like, everything's gonna be fine. But internally, I'm kind of like freaking out a little bit about what we're gonna do. And I remember I was one of the first people in my platoon that actually got sent to Afghanistan. They, they, they send you out in waves. They don't mm. wanna send you on the same flight at the same time for security purposes. And I arrived in Afghanistan um, with like two other people on my team. So there's like literally two or three of us, I think. And the way it works is you do like a turnover with the team that's you know on site. And there's a lot to explain, but basically imagine like out in the middle of nowhere, there's like these HESCO barriers set up. It's not even a real base. It's like a, it's called an outstation where you're, you're on the leading edge 
you're, you're basically near the enemy, so to speak. Uh, and we got out there and first of all, just the drive from where we landed at this huge military base, which was like 45 minutes away, just driving to the outstation was like surreal because first of all, there's like, we weren't allowed to slow down because of the IED threat. So like once you get going, you can't stop, which is hectic oh when gosh. you think about what that implies. It doesn't matter what's ahead of you. You have to keep going. Um, and you're driving through these bazaars in, in Afghanistan that are like full of people from Afghanistan naturally who hate you. And they're looking at the cars as they're passing by and they're not scared of you. That's the other thing that you have been in that country for so long. Nobody's scared. They're just staring you down and you're in this like very up armored vehicle and it's very cramped. You got all your, your kit on and we get to the outstation finally. And it was like such a relief to be behind these Tesco barriers. And we met the team we were turning over with and they had been there for six months. These are like seasoned guys. They're, they're getting ready to go home. And all they wanted to do was get these turnover operations out of the way as quickly as possible because they, you have to do a certain number of just like patrols together yeah. to like show them the area and then they get to go home. And they're like, we wanna get out of here. And so we're gonna do an operation tonight. And I'm like, I've never deployed in my life. I'm like so sketched about everything. I arrive at this outstation, my kit's not even set up, my, my body arm and everything. And like literally that night, I remember we, we went through this whole mission briefing of like what we're gonna do and it included like being on foot, like wandering in this area where like they were like, just make sure you carry a knife because it can get hairy out there. And it's like, okay. And I remember after our mission briefing of what we're gonna do, which was really just a patrol, but in a very contested area, yeah. I went back to my, it's called a chew. It's like, it looks like a, a, the trailer on a tractor trailer a truck and it has like an a AC unit in it. It's really, it's, it's, it's kind of an awful place to live, but either way, I went inside there and I had all my gear on because we're getting ready to step out for this operation in like an hour. And I got down on my knees and prayed that we would not go on this operation. I was certain I was gonna die. You know what I mean? Like yeah. not because the threat was so high, but because, okay, now I'm really gonna go do the thing I've been thinking about and training for. And it's no longer like a game. It's like the real thing. Um, and as, as it happened, we didn't go on the operation that night. It got canceled, but we did go out the next day and. Uh, on many operations, nothing happens. It's like, doesn't matter how contested the area is, you get there and nothing happens. Um, but I would say that over the course of the six months or five months that I was there, uh, we did get into things that very much fit the job description of what Navy SEALs do. And it was a mixture of both exactly what I thought it would be mm -hmm. from just from a training perspective that you do so much training that when you actually are in, you know, a situation where you're using your training, it's just muscle memory and everybody's so good. You're looking around at your teammates and it's like, it's, it's, it gives me chills even thinking about it. Like guys are fearless. They're doing all the right things. Guys that you thought were like maybe a little slow on the uptake of like how to do certain things. Mm -hmm. when, when bullets are flying, you know, they're pretty good at it. And I remember just being astounded at how well trained we were, which was really confident building. But it was also like, like to say it was adre adrenaline rush is not even close. The first time we like got, got shot at, I remember like being immediately completely out of breath, but I hadn't moved. Like it was like my body had tensed up so intensely that I suddenly was completely gassed. And that's another thing, like in actual situations, you're like, you can become winded really quickly. And, yeah. and, and it, it, the thing that I always think about is I've only done like the one tour where we had, you know, a limited number of actual engagements with the enemy. And I think about these other operators, other SEALs that have been in for like 20 some odd years through the bulk of like the war on terror. And I just, I can't imagine what it would be like to have done back to back to back to back deployments to these combat zones. Like doing one yeah. was like life changing and terrifying and, and all these different things. But yeah, so it was, uh, it was intense. It was were really you, intense. Were you afraid of dying? At first, but that quickly fades. Um, people ask, you know, what did it feel like to be living in a place that, you know, you're kind of in theory, like facing your death periodically. Um, and I will say, and th th this is probably not unique to Navy SEALs. I think it's more of like a military deployment thing. Um, you, 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 you're not stressed. You, because you're in kind of like survival mode, you automatically, your brain just like filters out everything else that could possibly stress you out. And it becomes just like very simple. You know, it's like I have my teammates who are like my friends. I care about them. I need to eat. I need to sleep. I need to like, you know, train. But that's it. You, you, there is no space in your your mind. It, it's like you, the idea of stressing about something from back home. It, it's like it doesn't compute when you're over there. You kind of enter this almost like, like primal 
mind state where it's mm. just very simple. And I remember I, I have, and this is not like a, I'm so cool, but like I've never slept better in my entire life than I did after a couple of weeks of being in Afghanistan. Not at first, it was very stressful. But then you enter into that kind of like, okay, like you, got, you just gotta do your job and like support the team. And you're just like carefree. 